Hello! In this video, we will be discussing the shadow mapping technique called cascade shadow mapping. This is a technique that can be used to both improve quality and reduce the needed size of shadow maps for large view distances. Cascade shadow mapping attempts to use the shadow map texture space more efficiently. By increasing this efficiency, we will get better shadows, but without increasing the size of our shadow maps. This technique will be particularly effective when a light has a very large viewable range, such as a directional light and a camera with a large far clip. The cascade technique will have us break up our view frustum into multiple different subfrustums as represented by the diagram. Each of these subfrustums will then have its own shadow map, and each could be the same or different resolutions. Shadows in the first and smallest frustum will have the highest quality, while those in the last will have the worst quality. In the diagram, you may notice that the three shadow maps actually overlap. It would be a further possible improvement to make these not overlap as they currently do. But this will fail in certain circumstances. We leave researching this idea to those that enjoy the topic. Here we see a model casting a shadow from a directional light. The shadow map being used is 2048 by 2048 in size. While that is fairly large, the texture space is not being used very efficiently, and the resulting shadows are of very low quality and can almost not be seen. Here we have the same scene, but instead of using one 2048 by 2048 texture for the shadow map, we use three 1024 by 1024 textures whose space is used more efficiently. The results are obviously a large improvement for shadow quality. So how do we implement cascaded shadow maps? First, we will cut our view frustum into multiple frustums. If we cut a frustum perpendicular to the view direction, the result will be two new frustums. Next, we will build the view projection matrices for each of our new frustums. If we had already written a technique for building these matrices for a single frustum, the same technique should work for however many new frustums we have. Then we will render the depths of our objects to each of our shadow maps. We will only need to render the object for a given shadow map if the resulting shadow would be in view of the frustum for that shadow map. Lastly, our lighting shaders will need to determine which cascade applies to the given pixel. This will tell us which shadow map and which view matrix to use for our shadow mapping algorithm. There are multiple ways to make this selection. One way would be to iterate th through each cascade starting with the smallest, and then finding the pixel's light space position. Once we have this light space position, we can divide it by its own W component to put it into clip space. If the clip space results do not represent a visible location, we would move on to the next cascade. If they did represent a visible location, we would know we have the right one and would use the, uh, the correlating shadow map and view matrix. Hopefully you caught all of that information. If you had any questions from this video or any of the previous ones, Please write them down and be sure to ask them first thing the next time class meets. Thank you.